Now that covers the basic EPS, but then we need to talk about something else, the diluted earnings per share or the diluted EPS. Now when do we have to calculate the diluted EPS? Well, we have to do this for any company that has a complex capital structure. So any company that has complexities with their capital is going to require this type of calculation. And this is going to show a hypothetical worst case scenario if all these things were exercised at the same time. Now eventually we're going to do a video demo problem in the next video and that's where you're going to see that how this is actually calculated in the form of a problem. But for the remainder of this video we're going to look at three things in particular that are going to require some calculations. Three things that will eventually become part of a much larger problem. So any company that has a complex capital structure, we're going to have to do some of these calculations. And as long as they have one of these three things, we would have to do these additional calculations. So what we're looking for are any convertible bonds, any stock options, or any convertible preferred stock. And like I said, in the next video, we'll do a demonstration of all this. But in this video, we're going to look at each one of these individually and see a quick example of how to deal with each one on their own. So the first of the three would be the convertible bonds. Now, anytime I sell bonds that are convertible into common stock, then that means I'm selling a convertible bond. And that's a problem because we never know if the people who own these bonds are going to decide to convert them. And if they do, we're going to have to do some calculations. Because it's not only going to increase the number of shares, it's also going to have an effect on our income. And when we have additional income, that's going to come from the fact that we are avoiding the interest payments. So that's a good thing. But at the same time, if we make more money, that also consequently means that we have to pay more taxes. So any income that's generated is going to have to be shown net of tax. So to see how this would work in an example, we have a company here that has sold $1 million of 8% convertible bonds. Each $1,000 bond is convertible into 20 shares of common stock and they happen to be in a tax bracket of 30 percent. So based on that information we're going to do a calculation to show how this would affect our EPS, how it would affect the number of shares and the income. So the first thing I want to do is simply figure out how many bonds there are. Now we know from the information given that they sold a million dollars worth of bonds. And we also know that each bond was a $1,000 bond. So if I take that $1 million total money that was raised and I divide that by $1,000, I get 1,000. So that tells me that we sold 1,000 individual bonds. Now each one of those bonds was convertible into 20 shares of stock. So it stands to reason that if I have 1,000 bonds, 1,000 bonds times 20 is 20,000. So that means that if all my convertible bondholders exercised all at once, I'm going to have to suddenly come up with 20,000 shares of common stock to provide to those bondholders. So that's the effect it's going to have on our stock. But it's also going to affect us on our income. Now, if the bondholders decide to convert, the good news is we will avoid that year's interest payment. So these were 8% bonds. Well, we sold a million dollars worth of them. 8% as a decimal is 0 .08, and 8% of a million dollars is $80,000. So I'm going to make an additional $80,000 simply by avoiding the interest payment but I don't get to keep all that money because of taxes. And if I'm in a 30% tax bracket, that means I get to keep 70% of the money. So 70% of 80,000 is 56,000. 
So if I have all these convertible bonds that were exercised all at once, I would have an additional $56,000 in income. So that is the calculation of how to deal with the convertible bonds. And usually we would do this calculation as part of a larger problem of diluted earnings per share. And we will eventually do that problem in a demo video. Now the second of the three areas are the stock options. Anytime we have outstanding stock options, we have to account for that. Now, what is a stock option? Basically, it provides someone with the right to purchase a certain number of shares at a guaranteed price. And we have to account for this using treasury method. So to see an example, we have a whole series of outstanding stock options. We've given the people the right to purchase up to 10,000 shares of our stock at a price of $50 per share. But currently on the market, the stock is selling for $60 a share. So based on that type of information, I would have to calculate the effect of the stock options. So the way I will do that is, first of all, I want to figure out how much money I'm going to receive. Now, if all these option holders exercised all at once, that would be 10,000 shares. But they do have to pay that $50 option price. So we're going to actually bring in $500,000 just from that. Now, if I bring in $500,000 and the stock is currently selling for sixty. dollars how much stock can I buy for $500,000? Well, if I divide that by $60, rounded, I would be able to buy 8,334 shares. So that's not going to get me all the way up there to the 10,000, but it's going to get quite a lot of stock. It's going to get 8,334 shares. So 10,000 minus 8,334 means that if everybody exercises the options all at once, I'm going to have to, on my own, come up with an additional 1,666 shares. So that's the proper way to do the calculation for the stock options. And then the third area, convertible preferred stock. This is any time that I sell preferred stock that features a convertible option. And that convertible option allows the option holder to convert it into common stock. So based on that, I would have to do a small calculation. So if you look at this example, say that a business has 20,000 shares of convertible preferred stock. Every share could potentially be converted into a one quarter of a common share. So 20,000 shares times one quarter means I would have to provide 5,000 additional common shares. So all three of these areas, the convertible bonds, the stock options, and the convertible preferred stock, those are potential problem areas. And we're going to have to deal with that anytime we see that in any company because that's going to have a big effect on our earnings per share.